All right, in this video, I'd like to talk about directional control valve schematic symbols. And there's a lot to them. And it is really important that a hydraulic technician or a pneumatic technician really understand how to verbalize what a schematic diagram is telling it about a directional control valve. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that is really important is to identify how many positions the directional control valve has. There has to be at least two positions in a directional control valve. And you can see here that these two right here are two position. And let's talk about why. Well, if you look right here and here, each one of these boxes is a position, meaning that it can switch in between these two positions, same here, okay? This side is one position, this side is two. Now, two positions are very common in both pneumatics and hydraulics, but there's also three positions which are much more common in hydraulics, all right? And you can see here that we have three positions here. We have the center position, which I'll identify as one, two, and three. And you can see that each one of these boxes has internal arrows that direct will show you which direction fluid will go based off what port it is tied to, okay? So there are directional control valves that have more positions than this, okay? But those are a little bit, um, those are used in other circumstances that we're not gonna get into today. All right, so today we're gonna focus on two and three position directional control valves. So once you've identified the position, the next thing we need to focus on are the number of ways. So this here is a two position directional control valve and it has two ways. And what a way is, is the, a port, okay? So if it's a two way directional control valve, it has two ports on there. If it's a three way directional control valve, it is a three port directional control valve. All right, so three ways means three ports, so forth and so on. So let's take a look. So the first one we wanna look at is the two position directional control valve. And this one right here has two ports on it, okay? So the, if there's just two ports on it, this is how they're identified. P for the pressure port, and on the top, this is the A for the actuator port, okay? So this would be considered a two-way, two-position directional control valve. Some people will say a two-position, uh, two two-way directional control valve, but more often than not, it is identified as a two-two directional control valve, okay? So um, the next one over here, again, two positions, but this has three ways associated with it, okay? So what that means here is we have one port here, one port here, one port here, all right? And so this would be a three-way, two-position directional control valve, or identified as a three-two directional control valve. This is how the ports are specifically identified. The P would be on the bottom left. The tank port, sometimes referred to as the reservoir, would be on the bottom right. And this top port, if there's only one port on the top, this is always identified as the A port. Now, if we stop and we can come and look at another one. This one right here is a two position directional control valve. It has four ports, all right? So this is a four two directional control valve. The ports would be here, 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 and here. And so what we would call this, this would be the bottom left is always P, bottom right is T, the top left is A, and this is B. An important note here, kind of a side note. If I know where the pressure port is coming, I can always identify where the A port is schematically because it is above there, all right? This is important because oftentimes, People who are drawing this up will flip these 
and they'll have the pressure ports going into weird ways because maybe the person who was drawing it up made a mistake or they weren't as familiar with hydraulics, they were more of a, a draftsman. It, so you always just have to be aware of that, that wherever your pressure port is coming in, your A port is above it schematically, okay? So um, this would be identified as a 4-2 di directional control valve. And then the next one we would want to identify is this one right here. Now this is a three position, as we mentioned before, all right? And it has four ports, okay? And this would be labeled the same way the 4-2 is, all right? So we have P, T, A, and B. Okay, so when we begin to identify these and label them, this one right here would be a 4-3 directional control valve. All right, and now as you can see, there are a number of different center ports that you can have with a 4-3 directional control valve. And I have other videos that go through the advantages and disadvantage of each one, and I'll link that down at the bottom if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Okay, so now that we understand the positions and the ways, right, the number of positions that a directional control valve can go into and the number of ways, let's dissect the next part of this. And that is, what do these positions mean? And this is very confusing for people who are new to hydraulics and pneumatics. What this shows you, all four of these show you, is where the directional control valve is when it's in its normal position typically, all right? So if there is a spring here, all right, it will hold a spool that, that, is, that is graphically represented by this schematic diagram in this position. So what this means is this is its normal position right here. This can be a little confusing depending on the manufacturer you're using, and here's why. If I have my spring here, all right, and let's say I have another, uh, let's say I'm just gonna put a little lever here like you see on the back of like a, a, fork, a fork truck or a dump truck or something like that. This lever here is going to push this and this changes position, allowing oil to flow. When you let the lever go, the spring pushes it back. So this would be its normal position. Some manufacturers will identify this as a 2-2 normally closed directional control valve, okay? And that's fine on a 2-2 valve. That is completely okay. I can also make it normally open. Some manufacturers will do that. And the way that works is you can, I could just draw that up here by putting my ports here and my spring here, all right? And so this would, ident this would be identified as a normally open directional control valve because in its normal position, oil will flow right through here, okay? Now, that can get a little tricky, this norm idea of normally open, normally closed on like a 4-2 directional control valve because there's no normally, no normally open or normally closed position. And some people will say, yeah, but that would indicate if the cylinder is extended or the cylinder is retracted. And that doesn't actually make any sense because you can switch that by switching your A and your B port, okay? So let's take a look at this one. So let's say here, this is the schematics uh, symbol for a solenoid. It's another method of moving the spool. And when you move the spool, you shift this back and forth. You want to be very careful about this, all right, because it's confusing because if I'm looking at a hydraulic schematic, I'm not going to see this thing physically move. Maybe if I'm lucky, I have an animation software that will show me that or a simulation software that will show me that. But more often than not, I just have to know that when I activate whatever actuator I have over here, the spool is going to move positions, and this box represents that next position. So let's go over that. In this position, P is connected to B, and A is connected to T through internal passages. All right? When I activate a lever or a solenoid or a push button or a key or a lever, whatever it is, this shifts. Then my P is connected to my A port, 
and my B is connected to my T port. And that directs the where flow is going. You can think of them as doors that are opening and closing and allowing you to get in through different passages. Okay? And so you have to be able to identify and know what these are. So for example, with a 4.3, most 4.3s have two springs on them. Okay, this would be called spring-centered, all right? And the reason they're spring-centered is because we want the normal position to be in the center. And then I can select different centers to put in there, okay? The ones that will work with different applications. Again, I have another video on that that I'll link in the bottom, all right? So after that, we just need to be able to identify what the actuators are. So if I look at this, this is a solenoid, okay? There are plenty of cheat sheets out there that'll tell you what those are and what their names are, but you'll just get used to seeing them over time. So this one right here would be a 4-2 directional control valve, solenoid control, spring return, okay? If this had two solenoids on there, all right? This would be a 4-2 directional control valve, double solenoid. This is where the normal position can become a little bit confusing because if there's no spring in here, its last position will typically be its last, the last place that it was at. So its normal position, there isn't really one, all right? And so if there's no spring on that, there is no normal condition on there, which is something that you want to be aware of, all right? This right here, this would be a lever actuated spring return uh, normally open to two directional control valve. And there are so many different ways to say that, which makes it a little confusing because how a manufacturer presents that information to you via their manual or their user guides or however it is can be somewhat distracting. And a lot of that is then based off their model numbers. All right, so be aware of that, that you, you have to learn that balance based off who you're using. So if you're using Eaton directional control valves or someone else, they're all gonna do it just a little bit different, all right? So if I came to here, and I'm going to put a little bit of a different one in here, I'm going to put a detent in here, all right? This symbol right here is a detent, which it doesn't require a spring. And what that means is you use a lever and you can lock it into position. So this would be a lever detent, 3-2 directional control valve, all right? And then its normal position will be wherever that detent is. Now, sometimes there are springs in there to help move the spool, Okay, that's totally fine, um, but sometimes they're represented in the schematic, sometimes they're not. Okay, now the last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to these directional control valves is this symbol here. So, if you ever see this symbol here, what that means is that it is hydraulically piloted, meaning that Typically, a solenoid will be associated with these, which I'll draw here in a second. The solenoid will not be physically strong enough to shift this back and forth, okay? So, sometimes they will put a pilot valve out here, and this would be the shorthand description of how that works, okay? And so, what that means is, I, you have a solenoid on top of this. Here's your schematic diagram for a solenoid. Okay, and the solenoid controls a small internal line inside of the directional control valve that will send oil to shift this back and forth. Now, if this is a big directional control valve, the pilot operated valve is going to be on top. Okay, sometimes referred to as a compound valve, sometimes referred to as a piggyback valve. There's all sorts of names for them, okay? Other times, if you see this on just like a 4-2, okay, this pilot, uh, this hydraulic pilot line is just going to be internal. So you'll see the solenoid and there won't be a second valve sitting on top of them. Okay, so be aware of that. And oftentimes manufacturers will forget, just won't draw this in there. It'll just be assumed that it's going to happen. So be aware of that. All right. And then oftentimes with these, you will also sometimes get this symbol here. Okay, and I'll draw it outside here. It looks like this. This typically is a what we refer to as a generic override. Okay, this will look like just a generic override. Oops. Okay, and what that means is when you see that on there like this, is that there's an override in there. So you can take like a welding rod 
or you know an Allen wrench, and you can push that in there, and it will force the spool to move. And this is a really useful trick because then you're, that will allow you to determine if the problem is electrical or hydraulic. Okay, and that would be to let you know if typically if it's solenoid control, they'll give you that option. All right, so this is a lot of information on how to read schematic diagrams for directional control valves. It takes practice, and uh, if you work at it, you'll get it. Okay, it can be confusing. Okay, because here's why one, you have to understand everything that's happening inside of there and be able to verbalize that to your coworkers. All right, two, the person who drew it had to draw it correctly, okay, which is most often the case, but sometimes I've seen it where it's not. And um, the manufacturer has to, dis to give you that information in specific ways, all right? So you have to be able to interpret what the manufacturer, what it calls it, to what you're familiar with, okay? And so that's a little bit more, that's a little bit on um, directional control valve schematic diagrams. I know I went on and on in this video, so I hope it helps. And uh, all right, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks a lot.